Hello, welcome back. Um, if you followed the last one, you'll know that I was having some difficulty at Silverstone um, a month or so ago. Um, it was cold, it was three degrees, it was it was a struggle to keep the, the heat in the tyres, um, but my fitness was, was sort of the main factor really, it let me down. Um, I was doing sort of two minute fifties, sometimes three minute laps, which, which was not great. Um, but one of the problems I had other than my fitness was I was getting a lot of shaking through the bars on 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 the front brakes um my original thought was it was a warp disc but as it was shaking through the bars and not pulsating through the lever um i wasn't 100 percent sure now i didn't have this problem last year um but what i had done is i'd sent the wheels off a powder coat now my other thought was maybe the mountain faces were not as clean as they could be um but what i'd done is i'd put washers over the the mountain faces and put bolts in to keep the threads and the mountain faces clean off the powder coat um, and I was quite fastidious when they came back to make sure there was no overspray if you like of powder coat so I knew the faces were pretty good. What I did do is I ran, did a runoff test on the discs to check for warpage. Now the right disc was 0 0.2 of a millimetre out which is nothing really. Certainly not, wouldn't account for the vibration I was getting through the bars, the, 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 the shaking. So. Um, Covering all bases, uh, the bike when I got it, it was missing the backing plates for the for the pads. These hold hold the pads. I'll get one out for you now. These hold the pads in place and stop them uh, stop them vibrating and and uh, moving around. Essentially, keep them under pressure. Um, now I didn't have the problem last year, even without the backing plates. So I can only assume they were removed removed for um, for cooling purposes I, I mean I don't know so so what I've done is I've bought some I went to Yamaha and I got the, the backing plates and I also got the uh, the corresponding pins in case there was any wear on the pins and it was leaving the pads a lot of room to move around now I feel like I had my pants pulled down quite frankly uh, four pins four backing plates 61 pounds blimey um, <clears throat> But also the pads in there, there's plenty of life on them, but they're Brembo's. I don't know which ones they are. I think they're red stuff. I'm not entirely sure they were in the bike when I bought it. Um, I think they're race pads. I'm sure we weren't getting anywhere near temperature. And maybe they were grabbing. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them out anyway. So I went to DR Bikes, a uh, lovely, lovely bunch of guys, um, and got some EBC GP Fax um, race pads, which is what I'm going to... Well, I'm going to put in there. So that was £120 a set. Um, six piston caliper on the 2007-2008 R1. Um, so £120 from DR Bikes. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll pop the calipers off. We'll give them the once over, give them a clean. I know they're clean, but we'll do it anyway. Um, and switch the pads out and see if that solves our problem. Okay. All right, so we're going to do this on the floor. Um, simple reason is the ramp is taken up by the Husqvarna and the Aprilia is, is obviously in the way there so we're just going to be easy I'm just going to do it down here <laughs> on the floor I'm going to go old school 12 mil ratchet nice and simple just the two bolts hold the caliper on we'll just uh, just loosen that off and we'll have a look we'll have a look at that now get there in the end okay what I find just helps sometimes it's got the calipers nice and loose just Sort of give it a little bit of a twist left to right just to free up a bit of space push the pistons back a bit free up a bit of space for you to uh to remove that there we go as you can see i don't know if you can see that but as you can see the um the backing plates are missing um they weren't there with the bike again i didn't have the problem previously so i doubt that was the issue but we are we're going to replace them anyway Pads are held in simply by these pins and two little R clips. I don't know if you can see that from there, so we just pop out those little R clips and slide out the pin. Slide out the pin, pads will just pop out. Still, you know, still a fair bit of meat on there, but um, you know, I can't really vouch for these pads. I don't know an awful lot about them. They were on the bike when I bought them. Um, they are Brembo, but. Um, we're going to switch them out anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Obviously, it's a six piston caliper, so you do have the larger pads and then the smaller ones. So the same, same process, just um, pop out the little R clips and the pin will slide out, freeing up the pads. Okay. Now, 
the caliper's pretty clean. Um, I'm pretty good at keeping on top of that sort of thing, but we will give it a quick once over anyway. Um, bit of brake cleaner. Um, also, if you give the uh, give the lever a bit of a squeeze, not too much because you will pop the pistons out. And just check that all six of those pistons are moving freely. If uh, if one isn't, maybe just hold the ones that are moving um, to stop them going too far. And um, just check that all six of those pistons will will move. You don't have any that are seized, but um, I think we're pretty good on this one. But like I said, do be careful because if you just keep pump, pump, pumping, what will happen is one of those pistons will pop out and you will have to bleed the entire system again. Okay. Okay, a little tip actually, um, when you're moving the pistons out, checking they're all moving freely. If you use your pads, um, you can manipulate, hold the pads if, if one side's coming out quicker than the other, you can sort of use the pads and also stop all the pistons moving um, in different directions and also prevent one of those pistons from popping out and you're having to re-bleed the whole entire system. So just a little tip, use the old pads. Okay, now we've got the pistons, they're all protruding slightly. I like to leave them out a little bit because what I'll do is I'll use an old toothbrush and some brake cleaner and I can get around the pistons as they're out and clean the grime off prior to reseating them and fitting the new pads. Okay. Okay, so um, got a little oil catch can just stop uh, stop you uh, dripping all over the floor. Um, break in there. Um, just give it a bit of a squirt just to free up any of the deposits, the dirt, the grime. Now these calipers, as I said, they're they're pretty good because I cleaned them all prior to prior to Silverstone, and an old toothbrush always handy. Don't bin them. Just you know, put them in a jar in your garage. And they're good for just cleaning off around the pistons, getting the bits of grime off. Um, and uh, a lot safer than using a little wire brush. You don't want to do that, you, you'll wreck the seals. It's not it's not a clever thing to do. So yeah, just uh, give them the once over. You'll see all the black grime build up around the pistons. That'll sort of hinder the, the, the pistons sliding backwards and forwards freely. Um, and also you don't want to drag in the, the grime and the grit and the brake dust back into the seals. Um, you know, it's not great. So give them a once over, just check that they're all nice and clean. As I said, this one's been done one track day ago. So one track day ago, so it's really not, it's really not that bad. Just uh, get in there, all around the pistons, check all the sides you can't see. And um, there you go. Make sure everything's, uh, everything's clean before you fit the new pads. And uh, there we go. All right. Okay, so uh, new pads. Right. Um, I'll do them all at the same time. Save me uh, getting my hands dirty, clean, dirty, clean. What we're going to do is just put a small amount of copper slip, um, copper grease on the back, just to you know stop the pistons from binding on there. Uh, stop it squealing. Stop it squeaking. Let's get these out. Now these are all clean anyway, so I won't need to do anything with them. Just uh, give them a bit of copper slip. Right, what have we got? Copper, copper. And he sees copper compound. Copper ease, that'll do. Got so many. Again, a bit of a uh, bit of copper grease. Now we only want a small amount. We don't want to cover the pads. And we certainly don't want to get it on the pad faces. Um, <laughs> that would not be good. So just a nice thin, thin layer. Like I said, stop it uh, squealing, squeaking, vibrating, um, and also to help the pistons contact on there not seizing on. Okay, so we're ready to put the pads in, quite simple. Um, two pads, obviously be very careful not to get the grease onto the friction pad material. So we've got our two pads, they simply go in the caliper, like so, 
and then the plate the plate that i was missing last year now if you look at the plate carefully it, nine times out of ten it'll have an arrow on there telling you the orientation which uh, which way is up essentially so we've got our pads in we have our plate arrow pointing up and it'll fit on like so and then all we do simply is slide the pin through the body of the caliper through the first pad through the pin through the second pad and out the other side of the um out the other side of the caliper obviously if you can see the little pin holes they're where the r clips go so if you can try and keep them in sight it'll make your job a little easier in a minute um again little r clips quite fiddly little buggers especially with gloves on um and they just pop in those little holes and stop stop the uh the pin from coming out <laughs> and then the pads from falling out okay so that's one if i can get hold of them into the little pinhole make sure he's seated properly as well so they're not going to think not going to fall out and that is the first set of pads i don't know if you can see that they're in there they're nice and uh, nice and clean ready to go and the same principle again for the uh for the smaller ones on these six piston calipers again mating faces together careful not to get any grease on them just slot them in I like to try and open them up it just makes it a little bit easier for you and again we don't have an arrow as such on this one but if you look on the caliper there you have a flat flat face and if you look on here you have these little clips so it kind of tells you which way which way it needs to go if you can see that Oh, not. And pin through the body, through the pad, through there, and there we go. Our clips, and that is one side essentially made up um, I like to just double check before I put it together that there's no grease or any overspill anywhere um, I'll get a bit of blue rag now and um, just wipe over the caliper and then we're ready to refit okay we're ready to refit this caliper so simple case of just uh, slot it on get it in position um, just get the bolts in on a few threads just to hold them in place get them in there now a lot of people are use thread lock on these bolts now i understand if you are a road rider um you know you're not taking them off very often but i'll do this at the end of every track day so i don't i don't tend to bother and obviously i'll make sure that that's uh talked up now i've checked the torque in the manual and it's set at 35 newton meters um little three eighths eighths torque wrench um really really handy thing to have um so 35 newton meters just set that and obviously it'll give you a little uh, a little click when um when it reaches the desired desired torque tend to make sure they're done there you go evenly just double check right okay 35 newton meters little tip also um when you're not using them, make sure you wind them out because uh, if you don't, they will eventually lose calibration. So always wind out your torque wrench when you're when you're not using it. I'll leave it set at 35 though, because we're going to go and do the other side in just a moment. So it'll save me having to do it again. 35 newton meters. Okay, so that caliper's on, it's done, pads are changed, put the pads, the, the, the backing plates in and the clips, giving them a nice clean. Um, last thing's last, just uh, make sure all of the pistons 
are coming out and you've got a positive yeah positive feeling at the bar last check i don't know if you can see in there i know i can't uh yeah they're all good to go so we'll, we'll move on and repeat the process on the on the other side